All right, good to see everybody here this evening. Take a songbook and let's start by singing together tonight. Turn over to 327. 327, it's Springs of Living Water. And let's sing that together tonight. 327, let's all stand together as we sing and Brother Bob will lead us. 327. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame And nothing satisfying there I found but to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came Where springs of living water did abound Drinking at the springs of living water Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy Drinking at the springs of living water Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply how sweet the living water from the hills of God. It makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've trod. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? The Savior now invites you to the waters free, where thirsty spirits can be satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh wonderful and bountiful supply. Man, good singing tonight. Man, it's cold out there, but you're singing like you're warmed up. And uh, good to see you in church tonight. Looking forward to a good service together this evening. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we bow before you in prayer to begin our service tonight. And Lord, we want to thank you for your goodness to us and just for being our God. Uh, Lord, we're, we're glad that we're your people, the sheep of your pastor. And Lord, I pray that you would meet with us now this evening. You know what we need here in the middle of the week. And uh, these folks have made the effort to be in church tonight and to not forsake the assembling of themselves together. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll give each one exactly what they need tonight. You, you know the needs of our heart better than we do. And so, Father, whether it's the, the music, some of the songs that are sung, uh, a word spoken by another church member, uh, the study of your word, whatever you'll use, use it in each one of our lives, Lord, to help us, to encourage us, and to make us a little more like Christ because we came to church tonight. I do lift up those unable to be here this evening because they're ill. I pray your healing touch to be upon them, Lord. Raise them up that they could be with us again very soon. Now, Father, God, in directing our service, please, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Would you turn with me to number 463, please? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. 463 on that first together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of us shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. 
then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder 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 I'll be there Jason Okay tonight's letters from the Hendricks men missionaries to Oaxaca Mexico Dear pastors and praying friends <coughs> Philippians 1:6 is a verse that I often hear at our home church It says being confident of this very thing that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. God certainly has begun a good work in us, and we are confident in him that he will perform it. You see, when we take ourselves out of the equation and allow God to perform a work in us, the work will get done. Proverbs 3.26 says, For the Lord shall be thy confidence. Our confidence is the Lord. It is his work, and we are certainly glad to be a part of what he is doing. God has blessed us with five new partners in the ministry since the beginning of January. It has truly been amazing to watch God work. Our support total is now at 54%. We still have several churches that have mentioned support, but we do not count the support until it comes in. God has been faithful to us and has provided for each need that we have had. Praise the Lord. We just returned from a 22-day stretch, and the Lord allowed us to travel safely, and we missed most of the snow. We were home for a few days and now hit the road again and will be gone for about a month. We have meetings in Kentucky, Ohio, Georgia, Texas, and Kentucky again. Please pray for safety and good health while on the road. We did retire our Jeep and were able to rent a van from Baptist Missionary Transportation for a few months while waiting on a car title for a car that was given to us. Please pray that God works out the details on this car. In our last letter, we mentioned that we were going to Oaxaca for 10 days in December. We had a great trip, and God laid a town upon our hearts to which, in which to begin the ministry. The name of the town is Santa Maria Humalua. There is also a piece of property available in this town that used to be a small university. Would you please pray for this property? It would be ideal for the mission base. We tried to meet with the town president while we were there, but he was out working. We are taking our church on a mission trip in June and hope to meet with the president at that time. Pray that God will allow us to meet with him. We also had a young lady from Oaxaca who lives here in the States contact us. She is saved, but her family in Oaxaca is not. She has asked if we can go to her town and share the gospel with her family. Her two children, her mother, her brothers and her sisters need to hear about Christ. They live in a town called Panataxhuaca. It is only about two hours from where we will be doing language training. We have committed to go and share the gospel with them. Please pray for this family that we can reach them with the good news of salvation before it is too late. We want to say thank you for your prayers and support for our ministry. Without you all behind us, it would be difficult to finish the task ahead of us till all have heard the Hendricksmans. That's great. Good report from Brother Joe. I talked to him just a few minutes ago, and uh, his dad came home last night uh, from the hospital. He's still uh, very weak and uh, has to regain his strength. He uh, had gotten very dehydrated. I guess he had been, Joe's telling me, he'd been retaining water. And they gave him a pill to take some of that water off. And the doctor had told him, when you go down five pounds, stop taking the pill. Well, he got so excited losing weight, <laughs> it was 15 pounds before he ended up getting so weak he had to go in the hospital. His kidneys were shutting down. And uh, so they had to give him IVs and begin to get his kidneys functioning again. And so now he's starting to get up on the men, but he's still very, very weak, and he's been ordered for like two weeks to just rest and not do a whole lot. So uh, keep praying for Brother Neil. Uh, he's home now, and uh, we'll pray that the Lord will give him a full recovery, and uh, he gets buck back up and on his feet. We'll have him up here to, to preach a Sunday for us, all right? 
Now, on your uh, prayer guide for your coming events, um, again, pray for the RU Inside uh, there on Thursday night down at uh, CRC. Uh, had a uh, snag last week. Uh, every week, though we go, the chaplain has to have paperwork up at the front desk for us to be able to get in. In other words, they have to have something there that says we're coming, even though we've been there for this long. Well, they didn't fill out the paperwork, and they weren't there, neither chaplain. So we had to get, we went down there and then had to come around and come back home. So we didn't get to have our you there last week. So uh, just uh, keep that in your prayers when you pray for that ministry that uh, passes, uh, paperwork, all the things that has to, that have to go right for us to be there would, would go right, okay? And we appreciate you doing that, okay? Uh, Friday night, Reformers Unanimous here at the church from 7 to 9, and then, of course, Saturday out at London in the morning and our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 o'clock, and then uh, Sunday will be I Love Missions Sunday, and we'll be looking forward to that day. That'll be a great Lord's Day together, and uh, the other events that are on the list. Do we have that sign-up sheet down there yet for the chili cook-off and pie bake-off? We should. That'll be there, I'm sure, by the end of the service, so uh, make sure you sign up uh, for that, all right? That's always a, a fun night and enjoyable evening and uh, some, good, some good chili, all right? And, uh, and to say nothing of the pies, all right? But uh, that's a great, great time, all right? <clears throat> then um, uh, on some other requests, uh, jot these down, if you would, please. Uh, pray for a couple people to be traveling. Uh, Jeanette Anderson is uh, heading out for California on Friday, and Jeanette will be out there watching grandchildren uh, for Anthony and his wife and, uh, until... I think she comes back March 7th, so got quite a, quite, a ways, quite a bit of time out there while they're both meeting their naval obligations, and uh, so she'll be taking care of the grandchildren, and then uh, Heather Joy is traveling also to California for about a month, and so pray for her and safe trip, and the Yoders are in Ravenna tonight, having they have a meeting there, so uh, they were in Cuyahoga Falls Sunday night, and they're in Ravenna tonight, so uh, pray for a good meeting for them, if you would please. And then I uh, had a card here tonight, Brother Taylor uh, asked prayer for a family member uh, having some marital problems, and uh, they're talking about a divorce, and just pray that they'll be willing to seek some counsel and uh, get some help for their situation, all right? So just uh, lift that family up in prayer, if you would, all right? On the inside of your prayer guide, we praise the Lord for Madison that accepted Christ her Savior on Sunday, and for Brother Mark who rededicated his life to Christ on Sunday. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, there were 22 men at London on Saturday, four first-time men, and uh, God continues to bless the ministry there at London. And then the church requests, and then if you'll uh, look up above, uh, pray for Carol Hoskins. Uh, Carol had a biopsy done, and um, it came back cancerous. And so she meets with the doctor tomorrow to uh, discuss the different options that they, what they want to do to attack this. And so uh, please uh, keep Carol in your prayers, if you would. Um, Richard Straw there at the top, this was depressed before we got the word. Last night, uh, he went home to be with the Lord. Uh, that's Jan's daddy. And uh, she informed me tonight just for the service that the uh, uh, service for him will be uh, Saturday, a week from Saturday. Not this Saturday, but a week from Saturday. It'll be the 20th, okay? So, uh, yeah, pray for, pray for Jan. She'll be traveling down, of course, and uh, for the family uh, during this time. Dad knew the Lord, and Dad's in heaven with him, and uh, reunited with his wife, and uh, it's, uh, that's, that's all a good thing, but it's still it's hard, hard to say goodbye to your loved ones, and particularly when it's your mom or your dad. So uh, please keep Jan in your prayers as that goes, okay? And then uh, the other requests, of course, continue to pray for those folks, and well, of our, our authority, those in the Congress, our local leaders, then, of course, our military, those, those fighting cancer. Uh, good to see Vicki Vaughn here uh, Sunday. Uh, should have taken that out there. She's not at OSU now, but good to see her in church Sunday. And uh, then uh, the salvation of these folks, as well as the unreached people groups that we pray for. <clears throat> on a regular basis, and then we're remembering Joe and Amy Hendricksman as they prepare to go to Oaxaca, and that God will continue to provide for them and meet their needs uh, as they travel on deputation and prepare to go to Oaxaca. All right, let's go to prayer tonight. Brother Wallace, I want you to come and lead us tonight in our prayer, and as Brother Bob leads us audibly, you pray along with him silently, if you would, 
And let's unite our hearts together in a time of prayer tonight. Brother Bob. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you again for being such a great God. Thank you, sir, for all that you've done for us and for our church, how you've helped us to grow. And Lord, we're just looking forward to seeing you work and in and through us and, and Lord, uh, seeing the, the greater works than uh, what you've already accomplished here. And Father, I want to thank you in, in, uh, um, before it ever happens because, uh, Lord, you deserve it. And Father, I, I just thank you for being the, the God that you are. Lord, uh, that when uh, we fail, you're always there. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, forgive us of our, of our shortcomings, Lord. And, and uh, Lord, forgive me of, uh, when uh, I am not faithful. Lord, I know that you are. And Lord, there's not one of us that, uh, Lord, doesn't slip from time to time. But thank God we've got a God that can look past that and see the good work in and through us. And Lord, I just pray that you would work through us, continue these works, these RU ministries at our prisons and our institutions. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to lift them up. Lord, uh, just uh, work in those men's hearts. So many times I read in your word where you turn to hearts of individuals. Lord, I, I, I see men's hearts turning towards you and women's hearts. And Lord, I just pray that that would continue to happen, that they would run towards you and seek you. And Lord, because there's no other hope but you and lord i just thank you again for this opportunity that we have to come to your throne room boldly because we are your children and we know that you hear and answer our prayers lord i think about the missionary list and the missionaries that we support I think about joe brother joe henderson and him preparing to go to uh, mexico lord i pray that you'll continue to pray their, to prepare their hearts lord uh, financially spiritually i Pray for his dad that you'll uh, give him a quick recovery, that he can get back on the road and doing what he loves to do is tell people about you and, and Lord, uh, help that Bible uh, International to grow down there. Lord, just plant those seeds and, and uh, watch those seeds grow. Father, I do thank you for uh, Carol Hoskins, and Lord, I pray that your healing hand would be up on her, Lord, just she's been faithful at uh, this church for many years. And Lord, uh, I pray that you'll work through her uh, to show her children and her grandchildren, Lord, uh, as she walks by faith and trusts you. Lord, I pray that that would draw people to you, that they would see you in her, and that it would draw many people to you. I pray for Sister Jan as she prepares to go down and, and uh, say uh, goodbye to her dad. And Lord, we know that he's already in heaven, that that's just a body laying there, but as our pastor said, it's not easy to go through these times. But Lord, I thank God that we have a great comforter that can comfort us and that can fill those voids. And Lord, that uh, you could still work through her. And, and Lord, she, she uh, desires that people would see Christ in her, even in this time of sorrow. And Lord, that it would draw men under, unto you. Father, I thank you for uh, all these things that you're doing here, I thank you for Brother Mark and him that rededicating his life. I thank you for this young lady that got saved. Lord, there's nothing more precious in your eyes than a soul getting saved. Lord, help us to continue to walk in the light that people will see how great a God that you are. Father, I pray for the uh, I Love Sunday coming up and the, the chili cook-off and and the, the pie baking thing, and I, Lord, I just uh, I just want to see people to see you in our church, and how we give all the credit and all the all the glory to you. And Father, I do pray for uh, Brother Yoder and his wife as they travel. And Lord, the weather is bad; keep them safe, give them safe travel. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be on him tonight, that uh, people will see the love of Christ in him, and Lord, that uh, he will get uh, support from uh, uh, many churches. I, I pray for all of our missionaries, that, uh, Lord, they will continue, people will continue to support them, that the gospel may go out and abroad to every nation. Now, Father, as our pastor brings uh, uh, the word to, you, uh, to us tonight and opens up your word, Lord, I pray that uh, the hearts will be uh, uh, surrendered to you to listen. And, and Lord, as he preached uh, the other day, that 
that uh, Father, let us not be only hearers of the word, but do be doers also. Lord, help us to receive. He sat down on that word, receive. Help us to receive the word in a way that it would make a difference in each and every one of our lives. And Father, we'll give you all the thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Well, it is I Love My Church Month, and uh, tonight we're, we're hopefully going to see a video <laughs> of the, uh, Xavier and Felicia Parrick. Parrick. Per Parrick, right? Am I saying that right? It's not Parrock. It's Parrick. Eric with a P. Parrick. Yeah, got it. All right. And uh, now you know. And is it Xavier or Xavier? <laughs> You, you answered either one, huh? It doesn't matter. All right. That's great. All right. And uh, they, let's sing our song together. Uh, I go to Bible Baptist. I love my church. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You got it, Lisa? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. All right, we'll hopefully hear from Xavier and Felicia. Are you ready to roll? who knew about the Bible Baptist Church uh, through uh, the radio. Um, initially, we had been searching for a church, visited uh, two other Baptist churches, um, weren't sure yet, did a Google search on Baptist churches, and realized we've got to pray. <laughs> there were pins everywhere. So uh, then a friend of ours uh, had said, uh, we listened to Pastor Slabel on the radio, maybe you should yeah. look at that church. And so that's what we did. Um, personally, me, uh, I got saved at the age of 22, uh, right? On the time of Felicia, but uh, she was not 22. Um, I was going to college and uh, serving myself, and uh, but I did grow up in church, but I uh, did not really know the gospel until college, uh, and then I repented and believed in Jesus Christ, and uh, so we've been here since June 2015, and uh, we serve on the bus uh, together, and I'm in choir, uh, and um, and uh, occasionally usher, yeah, and uh, I think that's about it for me. Um, well, I I found Bible Baptist uh, through a friend from the radio, and one of the reasons I love being here is I see a lot of the older women teaching the younger women, and that's just not common in a lot of churches. And as I was a homemaker when I came into this church, that wasn't common either to find a church that had other homemakers, and it wasn't a shameful thing. It wasn't. Um, it was definitely against culture, and I was very welcomed and um, I just knew that this was a place I could grow and we could grow in conviction and um, not have to compromise anything and the Word of God was preached and we knew that this is where God had us to be. Um, I serve on the bus with Xavier and I love working in the nursery. Um, I also, uh, along with Xavier, edit the radio broadcast, uh, Words to Encourage, and it has become one of my favorite ministries to serve in. It's so edifying and it's touching so many lives. So I encourage anybody who comes after us to please take that ministry. It is an amazing opportunity to touch lives. Um, how I came to Christ, I was 15 years old. I had a, a man, a friend of the family, witness to me. Um, before, couple that whole day, actually, I was thinking, who can take these fears that I had controlling my life away? And um, my life was pretty much a wreck because of my sin. And the song came to my mind, Jesus Loved Me. And I never went to a church at that time that sang hymns. And I went up to my mom with a picture of Jesus Christ, and I said, would you please tell me everything you know about Jesus? And she said, call Fred. And she comes from a Lutheran background, and I said, Mom, who is Fred? And she said, he is a Christian. He was the first man to ever share the gospel with me. He says, your sins separate you from God, 
and I didn't know what sins were. I wasn't familiar with the terminology uh, enough to understand, but I did want to learn about who Christ was, and through the intervention of my family, um, I was in a youth group where I first was introduced to Christian love, and um, they accepted me the way I was, but thank the Lord I didn't stay that way, and through the second time of hearing the gospel, I believed. I realized I was a sinner, and no one had to convince me of that. It was very obvious. Um, and through that, God's divine hand just kept on placing me in churches that were um, strong and preaching where I could grow. And my whole life changed. And, um, you know, the life that I now live is it's so foreign to me from who I was before I knew Christ. And I didn't grow up in a um, Christian home. But now we have the opportunity, because I'm saved, to ha actually have a Christian home. So I just give God the glory and I praise God for Bible Baptist. I praise God for my Christian husband and for my parents and uh, who are constantly are praying for to walk with the Lord. And I just thank God for this church family. to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. Let's sing that last together. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust. Jesus, Jesus, pray. 
and you may be seated. Ushers will come and we'll get our offering tonight. And gives the Lord his blessing, prospered you, and um, let's ask the Lord's blessing on our giving this evening. Brother Taylor, lead us in our prayer. Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy that's renewed every morning, Lord, towards us, the whole world. Father, thank you for giving us this place to come and worship again together. Be under your word, Lord. Bless this offering as we're about to take it, Lord. May it be pleasing to you. Multiply it as only you can. To further your kingdom, Lord. Be with the pastor as he opens up the word and help us all to be attentive to, to the spirit and hear what you would have us to hear, Lord. Make sure we open our hearts to your word and not harden it. Do not treat your word so callously. Be with us now and may everything be pleasing in thy sight, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. We're going to begin reading with verse number 10 this evening. Verse number 10. Where the Bible says, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots are they, or spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children." which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with the man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. Now, Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here tonight. And Lord, as we uh, continue to look at what you gave to the apostle Peter, to write to these believers, warning them of false teachers, 
And here as we look at this description and these characteristics of the false teachers, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to glean from here what you would have us to glean, the things that would help us to be aware and to not ever fall uh, under the spell and the false teachings of these kinds of teachers. Lord, certainly they were warned in Peter's day, and certainly we ought to be warned in our day uh, to be aware of these teachers. So help us as we study tonight. Open our understanding of your word, and Holy Spirit, be the teacher, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's review a little bit uh, a few of the lessons from chapter 1 and chapter 2. Remember from chapter 1, it was be sure of your salvation. It was to be increasing uh, in the knowledge of Christ. Uh, that was adding to our faith, being diligent to add to our faith. And then we said the third lesson was not to grow weary in being reminded of things. Uh, it's a constant uh, uh, repetition and a reminder. It's so easy to let things slip is the Bible terminology. Uh, they slip out of our minds, and so we can't be weary of being reminded of things. Now, in chapter 2, last week, we started dealing with the false teachers. And we talked about where are they? They're among us, all right? They're among us. And what do they teach? Damnable heresies. Uh, how are they motivated? By covetousness. Covetousness. And their end result is judgment. The judgment of God. And tonight, we're going to talk about false teachers, what they are. Not what they do or what they're teaching, but what they are. And listen, we're not going to see less false teachers as the day approaches, as the return of Christ draws near. We are going to see more, all right? Hold your place there in, in 2 Peter chapter 2 and look at a few scriptures, all right? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Just back to your left, just a few books. 2 Timothy Chapter 4. Aren't you glad you have a Bible? 2 Timothy chapter 4. Notice here in verse 3, Paul telling Timothy, by the way, verse 2, Paul tells Timothy, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. So the, the backdrop of verses 3 and 4 is verse 2, where he tells them, You preach the word, Timothy, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, sound Bible teaching and preaching. But what will they want? They'll after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And the time will come, I would say, the only change I'd make to that is the time has come. And that's exactly what people do. Uh, don't tell me the truth. Tell me what I want to hear. Uh, when it says itching ears, it's, it's, it's scratch me where I itch. Okay? Tell me what I want to hear. That'll, that'll soothe my itching ears. And we have all kinds of, of, of teachers and, and, uh, over the airwaves or in person that'll, that you can go to church now in these days who will just tell you what you want to hear. And you, then folks have turned their ear away from hearing the truth. And so that's the characteristic of the last days. Now, look, look just in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. And notice what he told him in chapter 3 in verse 13. He said, evil men and seducers shall wax, what? Worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So Timothy, it's not getting better. It's going to get worse, okay? And be prepared for that. Now, go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is probably a familiar verse to you, where the Bible says in verse 1, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with them of them which believe and know the truth. And so, again, in the last days, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, 
And they give heed the seducing spirit and doctrine of devils. And we spoke about that last week. So we're, we're not coming to that time. We're living that time. We're here. And, and so these, these uh, admonitions or these characteristics we're going to see of these false teachers will be very, very important to us to identify who they are in our day. All right? Characteristics of false teachers. Number one, the Bible says here in verse 10, they walk after the flesh. They walk after the flesh. It says the same thing in chapter 3 and verse 3 where it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, walking after their own desires. They're walking after whatever the flesh wants them to do. Romans 8 and verse 13 says, that if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Okay? There's, there, there's no uh, future in living for the flesh. Galatians 5.17, the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh these two are contrary one to the other now you're not going to walk after the spirit and walk after the flesh uh, it's an impossibility to do both you have to walk after the spirit and we'll find out later you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh now look at Galatians 5 would you go there please Galatians chapter 5 that's where we find the works of the flesh as well as the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5, if they're going to walk after the flesh, what is the flesh? Well, here it tells us in Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Manifest means they're made plain. Okay? And we're going to go through these and define them for you so you have an understanding of what they are and recognize what it is to walk after the flesh. The flesh is is just filthiness of the flesh. Now notice the first one is adultery. Adultery is immorality. It's a violation of the marriage vows. That you'll keep yourself only unto him or her so long as you both shall live. Okay, And they walk after uh, adultery. Then it says fornication. Fornication is, is just immorality as a, as a general term. And, it, and by the way, fornication can can be within marriage or outside of marriage or it can be with unmarried. Some people say, oh, adultery is just if you're married and fornication is only if you're unmarried. But the truth is, fornication involves it all. Jesus said that, remember, you don't have any grounds for divorce except it be by fornication. Well, that's with married couples. So there's, it's a broad term, but it's a term just denoting immorality. And we live in an immoral world today and they follow that fornication. Then it says uncleanness. Uncleanness is dirty, not wholesome. Not wholesome. Describes just about anything on television anymore. Dirty, not wholesome. Then there's a word, lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Let me help you know what that is. That is living by lust. It's not, it's not the act of fornication, but it's everything that leads up to it. Okay? All the, the behavior, it's just, just living by lust, lasciviousness. Then there's idolatry. Idolatry is the excessive or blind adoration. It's reverence or devotion to anything other than God. Giving your reverence and your devotion to anything other than God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And we've, we've got them. Oh, you know, we think, oh, I don't have any idols in my house. Uh, be careful what you say. A lot, of Americans, a lot of Americans have idols that way. And we have to be careful. We're not giving that devotion and that honor to anything that we're supposed to give to God. Okay? Uh, that's why I, 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 for the life of me, can never understand churches that will cancel their Sunday evening service because there's a Super Bowl on. Uh, never have understood that. What are, you, what are you saying? Who's your God? Who's your devotion to? Who's your loyalty to? Uh, doesn't make any sense to me. So there's idolatry. Then there's an interesting word here. It says witchcraft. Witchcraft. Practicing magic using demonic powers. Practicing magic using demonic powers. The, the word actually is pharmakia. Pharmakia. What, what, you know what word we get from that? Pharmacy. 
it's drug related. Sorcery, it's the practice of dealing with evil spirits are magical incantations, casting spells upon somebody by, by, when, and usually with drugs involved. Various kinds. We're there. Wonder, some people wonder, how can, how can people come under, it, when they get abducted, addicted to certain drugs, you almost feel like they're, they're under a spell. And they can't shake it. They, they, they literally are. It's, it has to do with the demonic powers. And listen, the more we move away from God, the more we move towards a demonic-controlled and a demon-controlled society. And, and it's no surprise the rise in the drug problem. I heard several of the candidates mentioned in New Hampshire the, the, the problem with heroin there. And uh, it's not just there. It's everywhere. It's all across this country, all across the world, really. And so then the next one is hatred. Hatred is an intense dislike or hostility. It's a lack of regard for another. It's a bitter dislike or ill will against anybody. Hatred is a tendency to hold grudges against or to be angry at somebody. It has, it has in it the idea that you'd like to hurt somebody. That's hatred. Then there's a word called variance. Variance. Variance is a conflict. You know what variance is? It's just arguing and fighting for the sake of arguing and fighting. In other words, you're not agreeing when you could agree. You're just being difficult to get along with. Difficult to deal with. And, and right there, you could probably put teenager right in there. I don't know. Sometimes they just do it, be difficult to get along with. Difficult to deal with. You know what that is? Variance. That's the flesh. And by the way, we all get that way sometimes. And sometimes you're just being difficult, and when you're just being difficult, that's not just, well, I'm just being difficult. You just say, you might as well say, no, I'm being in the flesh. Boy, that's quiet. Okay? I'm just being in the flesh right now. All right, variance, being difficult to deal with. Emulations, emulations. Emulation is resentment against a rival or a, a, a resentment against a person enjoying success or advantage. It's very akin to jealousy. You, you, you want to you wanna surpass and outdo somebody else. You're not just doing it for God and doing it for the glory of God, you're doing it so you can beat somebody else or look better than someone else. Emulations. Then the Bible says wrath. Wrath is vengeance or punishment as the consequence of great anger. Wrath is fierceness. It's determined and lasting anger. Getting back at somebody for a perceived wrong. That's wrath. Then there's strife. Strife is struggling in opposition. It's a contest for superiority or advantage for selfish gain. How many times the Bible talks about, that's why it talks about when there's strife present, there's always pride present. Whenever there's strife, it's just for superiority. You're struggling to be better than somebody else. Or take advantage of somebody else. Then there's seditions. Seditions. Seditions is rebellious disorder. It's causing trouble. It's stirring up strife. Whether it's in government, at work, at home, or any other place. It's just not wanting to keep order. Not wanting to uh, uh, do what you ought to do. You always want to be rebellious. Seditions. Then, of course, heresies, which we've covered before. It's where sound Bible doctrine is rejected. Or a false doctrine is taught in place of sound doctrine. That's heresies. Then there's envyings. Do you ever say, boy, I'm envious of them, or boy, I envy them? Be careful. Envy, a work of the flesh. 
Envy is very close to jealousy, but it's a feeling of discontent or covetousness with regard to someone else's advantages, someone else's success or someone else's possessions. It's ill will, it's jealousy. It's, it's thinking somebody isn't worthy to have what they have. That they didn't deserve what they have. And by the way, you feel that way because you feel like you're more deserving. How come, well, how come they chose them to sing and not me? How come they chose them to do that and not me? How come they asked them to help here and they didn't ask me? See, you know what that is? That is envying. That's a work of the flesh. Okay? When you see it, identify it, and confess it to God. You're walking after the flesh. Then, of course, murders. We know that's the intentional killing of another human being. Drunkenness, intoxication. In uh, this case, it's excessive drinking or drug use to the point where you diminish or lose good judgment. Drunkenness. And then there's revelings. Revelings. That's partying hard. It's indulging in loud, boisterous festivities for no apparent reason. It's letting loose of inhibitions and good judgment. It's just getting rowdy. Going on a drunken rampage. It also involves rioting. We see reveling going on today. You see it any time a, a sports team wins a championship. Their, 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 their celebration turns into a riot. You know why? Revelings. Usually linked to the one before it, drunkenness. They lose control. And those 17 things sum up, listen, the false teachers that walk after the flesh. Walk after the desires. There's the works of the flesh. Now, what are we supposed to do? Look at, look at the Bible talks about verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now here's where, here it is, verse 24, don't miss it. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. What do you do with those affections and those desires and those things that you used to crave? You know what you do? You crucify them. Crucifixion was a very cruel death. No mercy. You, you can't have any mercy. There's a, you don't, you cannot, uh, try, to, try to help the folks with the, in the RU ministry. That you know, what you have to understand is you, you may not indulge in your addiction, but if you're indulging the flesh in any area, you're opening the door to go back and indulge in that addiction. You, you give the flesh an inch, it will take everything you got. You have to nail it. You have to nail it to the cross. Crucify it. Put it to death. Death is separation. Separate yourself from it. Don't put yourself in that, that position. That's what a true believer does. It crucifies the flesh with the affection and the lust thereof. All right? So... The first characteristic of the false teacher is they walk after the flesh. All right? That's the, hey, that's just the old man. That's the old nature. The flesh is, is doing what I want, what I think, what I feel. And doing what I think. Okay? So it's walking after the flesh. Number two, also in verse 10, then it says they walk in the lust of uncleanness. It says... They walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Uncleanness is filthiness. We said earlier it's things that are not wholesome. Over in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 3. Ephesians 5 and verse 3. The Bible says, But fornication and all uncleanness are covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. That, that, that idea of uncleanness, unwholesomeness, uh, things that are, not, that are filthy, it ought not to be named once among those 
because it doesn't become, it doesn't look good on a saint, okay? A child of God. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 7, God has called us to be holy. All right? And so they walk in the lust or the desires of uncleanness. We are to walk in the way of holiness to God. All right? So they walk in the flesh. They walk after the flesh. They walk in the lust of uncleanness. Number three, they despise governments. They despise governments. Government is is there to exercise authority over an individual or an institution. And what they really despise here is authority. I want anybody telling me what to do. And that's where we are in our, in our society. No accountability, no responsibility. Can I say this? Everybody needs accountability. A child needs the accountability of a parent. That's why God gave you parents. Okay? Every child needs that. Every citizen is accountable to the, those who govern them. What's a, when, when somebody, you know, when you, I, I, I don't get to golf as much as I, I'd like to. I think I golfed one time last year. Isn't that terrible? And uh, you're supposed to say, yes, that's terrible. And, uh, the, um, but, you know, on a, on a golf cart, they'll put a governor on there. What does that mean? means you can put that thing down to the metal, you know, pedal to the metal, and you just go, you know what I mean? You don't go anywhere. It governs how fast you can go. Uh, certain trucks, I think, on the road to keep you from going too fast, they put a governor on there, and it'll top you out at certain speed, and that's all the, further you're, all the faster you're going to go. It's, it's controlling you. You know what they want? They don't want anybody controlling them. Nobody telling them what to do. But uh, every... Everybody needs accountability. A wife accountable to her husband. A husband accountable to his wife. Everybody needs accountability. Employee to employer. Pastor to church. All right? No one, listen, make sure you understand this. No one's right with God and wrong with the authorities in their life. Okay? A child's not right with God and wrong with their parents. Okay? A husband's not right with God and wrong with his wife. A wife isn't right with God and wrong with her husband. Okay? You have to be right with the authorities in your life to be right with God. Okay? And they despise that. They, they don't want anybody to hold them accountable. When you're right with God, you know what you do? You welcome authority in your life. You welcome accountability in your life. You, you want that. And, and you know, you, you don't take that... Listen, you don't take the boundaries has being restrictive. You welcome the boundaries. Because you know in those boundaries, I'm protected. In those boundaries, I'm safe. In those boundaries is where I, can, I have freedom. It's when I go outside the boundaries that I end up in bondage. And things out there that will bind me and hold me and restrict me and hurt me. And we understand that, but the false teachers do not. They despise the authority. All right? Number four. Number four. Then it says something interesting. It says, presumptuous are they. Presumptuous are they. Presumptuous means overstepping bounds, taking things for granted. And I'll tell you, how do they, how do false teachers overstep bounds or how do they take things for granted? Let me give you two examples. Number one, you demand things from God. You tell God what He's going to do. And God has to do it. There's a, some, some places you, they call that name it and claim it. Or they tell you, no, you don't pray asking God. You, you tell God the answer. You, you pray the answer is what you pray. They're telling God what He has to do. Hey, Hebrews, look at, look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. Look at verse number 16 with me, will you? Hebrews 4, 16. If you're there, say amen. All right. Let us therefore come 
boldly unto the throne of grace that we may tell God what He is supposed to do for us. If that's in your Bible, you got the wrong Bible. Now, he says, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy. Mercy. We're there. We're, we're there. First of all, it's interesting. The two words that's used when it comes to us praying to God are grace and mercy. I don't see, any, I don't see anywhere where we can demand anything. I don't see anywhere we can d- d- tell God what, what He's supposed to do. I think, I think we're there by His grace which is uh, Him doing it for us. He was giving us something that we don't deserve. Mercy is Him not doing something to us that we do deserve. And listen, you don't, nobody gets prayers answered on the basis of merit, but on the basis of His mercy. And we're coming to obtain mercy, that we may find, that, that we may find grace to help in time of need. We're, we're asking God for His sufficiency for His ability in our time of need. And God's able to do that, but that's not on demand. Alright? That's, that's, we're, we're begging God for His mercy. So, the one way we get presumptuous, the false teachers get presumptuous, is they tell God what He's going to do. And number two, they believe God speaks directly to them. I'm talking about visions. I'm talking about Revelations. God told me to do this. God spoke to me and said to do this. Or I saw this image appear at the foot of my bed and, you know, Jesus came to me. Or somebody's, I was slain in the Spirit. It's not even a Bible term. Okay? And, 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 and certainly nobody blowing on you and you falling over unless they had extra onion on their hamburger, you know? But... You, uh, that, that's not, there, there's nothing in the Bible like that. Nothing in the Bible that speaks to that. It's totally off. And so we, we think that God speaks directly to us. And so what happens when that happens? We say, Jesus is coming back May 22nd. What was that? 2011, 2012, somewhere in there? Huh? How'd that work? Huh? But it goes back to that. I remember a booklet that I saw in 1988. 88 reasons why Jesus will come in 1988. Well, apparently God didn't read that. And He didn't come. But all these folks were were just sure that God told me this. See? And you can't... uh, That's that's presumptuous. Presumptuous. And and by the way, I would think it's very presumptuous of, of all these people in the world and God's going to reveal this to me. Who am I that God's going to tell me when Jesus is coming? I'm a piece of dirt. And I'm not, I'm not better than anybody else. But you see, they, it goes, that, that ties into the next thing in 2 Peter that they are. And after presumptuous, you find out presumptuous are they. What's the next word there? It's a hyphenated word. Self-willed. Self-willed. Self-pleasing. Dominated by self-interest. This is, this, that's why they think God will speak directly to them. That's why they think I can just tell God what He's supposed to do and He's going to do it. And just, just command Him what he, what he should do for you. and Tell Him what He's supposed to do. What goes with that is, here's the truth that God's revealed to me and no one's ever seen this before. As soon as somebody says, no one's ever seen this before, boy, a flag ought to go up in your head. You know, for for 400 years, people have been preaching from a King James Bible. Okay? There's, I, I kind of feel like Solomon when he said, there's nothing new under the sun. When someone says, I found a truth here, I, I've uncovered something that no one's ever uncovered. Boy, a flag ought to go up in your head. Okay? Uh, you, you, you're, you're, you're self-willed. It won't change. And, and by the way, that's the... Uh, you've heard me say, sometimes people who, who fall under the spell of people who, who come out with books. You have to be careful about this, especially prophetical things. Because they... Most, most people who sign a deal with a book company, they have to produce a book. 
every so often. That's part of the deal. Because they know readers like to read your book, and so every six months or at least once a year, you've got to come up with a book. Well, that means I've got to come in here and I've got to find something that no one else has uncovered and I've got to come up with something that no one else has ever seen so I can write a book about it so I can sell more books. Are you there? Huh? Are you all right? Okay. Hope I'm not killing your favorite author. But uh, self-willed. Self-interest. I can come up with this and give you the... The, 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 you know, the toe on the beast of Daniel or whatever and uh, write a book on that and everybody will buy it and I'll, I'll be able to purchase another airplane for my ministry. <laughs> okay? So, self-interest. Then he goes on to say, they're, they're dominated by self-interest. They're... Um, Verse number 12, it talks about not afraid to speak evil dignities and talks about angels and we'll cover that again in a little bit. Uh, Not not tonight, probably next week. But verse 12, I want to go into that. But these as natural brute beasts to be taken and destroyed. Natural brute beasts. In other words, they're just living naturally. There's no living supernaturally with them. The Christian life is not a natural life. It's a supernatural life. You're not going to naturally live a Christian life. You'll naturally live a natural life. (laughs) A life after the flesh. Jude 10 says the same thing. In other words, they live more like animals than they do human beings. And they'll speak evil of things they do not understand. But it says they'll perish in their own corruption. They speak evil of things they don't understand and they'll utterly perish in their own corruption. Bind every false teacher that ends up in sin is wrong doctrine. Wrong doctrine lays the groundwork for their own destruction. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. So you, 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 they'll perish in their own corruption. They make a net for others to fall into, but they fall into it themselves. Then verse 13 says that they receive the reward of unrighteousness. They'll receive the reward of unrighteousness. That reward is going to be, depart from me, Uh, You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I never knew you. Look at Philippians chapter 3. Would you go there? You all right? We're almost done. Philippians chapter 3. Paul addresses these to the church at Philippi as well. Philippians 3. Verse number 17. Brethren, be followers together of me. And there's what he said, Mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an ensample. Now here's the parentheses, personal instruction from the author to the reader. God's interjecting something here. And here's what he says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Their end is destruction. Jude, in his book, calls them twice dead. If someone is twice dead, how are they dead? That's right. They're dead spiritually and they're dead physically. So, are these false teachers truly saved individuals? No, they're not. And that's not, that's not you and I making that judgment. That's God's Word telling us that. So we understand who we're dealing with. And then, the last thing we'll cover tonight, we'll move on to some others next week, but the last one for tonight is it says, they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. You know, it used to be 
immorality, indecency, filthiness. A lot of that garbage was reserved for the night time. The cover of darkness. But not any longer. Now it's open season. And it's any time, daytime, any time. That, that riot in the daytime means undisciplined living. Undisciplined living. Listen carefully. I think that means sloppy dressing. I don't care how popular it is to have everything oversized or hanging out and being sloppy. That's not the way a Christian ought to look. I don't care how popular it becomes. I don't care. I don't, I don't think, listen, I don't care how popular it is to have, you know, hair going 18 different directions sticking on your head. I don't think that's what a Christian ought to look like. Why are we conforming to the world? Listen, God, God does everything decently and in order. Am I reflecting that in my life? Am I reflecting that I serve a God who does things decently and in order? We ought to. We ought to. So the sloppy dressing and the clothes, shirt hanging out or the droopy pants... That's all just part of riotous living. Undisciplined living. Remember back in college, when I first went to college as a freshman at college, we, the college I was at at the time, they, when you got back from dinner in the evening, from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock was quiet in the dormitory. You were not allowed to talk. In your room you could talk, not in the hallway. At a, a study room, it was all time to study. You know what they told all, everybody, incoming freshmen in orientation? They said, when, now when you come back to your room after supper, supper you had to wear a shirt and a tie. They said, do not change into your favorite t-shirt and blue jeans and lay on your bed to study. Now why would they tell us that? Because you're in your comfortable clothes, you're laying on your bed, you got some book in your hand, and you know what happens next? But even sitting in your chair, you get in your comfortable clothes, you know what you don't want to do? You don't feel like studying. And, and, and listen, they knew something about that. That's why I think there was a day, even in the, the state schools, the, the, what used to be a public school, listen, they, they had dress codes, used to have dress standards. And by the way, that's because you're there to learn. And, and you, didn't, you didn't just come all sloppy and come as you are and come in your play clothes. You didn't do that. Undisciplined living. And it creates an undisciplined environment. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4 and we'll be done. Go back to 2 Peter to 1 Peter chapter 4. For as much then, verse 1, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now watch, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. How are we supposed to live? Once we come to know Christ our Savior, how are we supposed to live the rest of our time? And we live, live after the flesh? No, we're supposed to live to the will of God. What God wants. But wait, look at verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings. By the way, does that list sound familiar? What are those things? Works of the flesh. Banquetings, abominable idolatries. Now here's the key, verse 4. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account of him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Listen, they think it strange you don't run with them to the same excess of riot excess of undisciplined living let me ask you a question there, we live in a day when it seems like 
Christians don't want to be thought strange. I don't anybody think I'm a weirdo or something. I got news for you. If they don't think you're strange, there's something wrong with your Christianity. You don't run with them to the same excess of undisciplined living. I'm not going to be sloppy. I'm not going to... I'm not going to be undisciplined in the way I conduct my life. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't lay in bed till noon on Saturday. Eleven thirty, but not noon. No, you don't, you don't, you don't do that. Undisciplined. Here's what time. By the way, you don't just go to bed when you want to. You don't just get up when you have a bedtime. You have a get up time. Not only for you, but for your children. Your children need to be scheduled. God does everything discipline or decently and in order, not undisciplined. You know what it is? It's higher ground. It's higher ground. Songwriter said, "I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground." I like the I like the song. Here, here it is. I want to live. Above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled. You know what his darts are? Be like everybody else. Be like everybody else. Just go along with everyone else. He said, no, I want to live above the world though Satan darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. That's where I want to live. That's where we ought to live as believers. And not be mistaken. And not be grouped with these folks who are false teachers. Now there's more he's got to say about these folks. And uh, we couldn't fit it all in in one Bible study. So we'll break it up into two. And we'll continue it next Wednesday night. All right, Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing now upon our study here this evening. Lord, I thank you for the Word of God and its plainness to us. And Father, I'm asking you that you would help us to live the Bible that we've learned, to be aware of the false teachers, to make sure that we test the spirits and test the teachers by the written Word of God. And Lord, I pray that you'd help each of us to crucify the flesh with the affections and the lusts that we would yield to the Spirit and allow the, the fruit of the Spirit to be seen in our life. And Lord, that the world would think it strange that we don't run with them to the same excess of riot, that undisciplined life and undisciplined living, but they can see there's a difference in the way we conduct ourselves and conduct our lives because we live the rest of our time in our flesh or in this flesh to the will of God. Help us to live that way. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord. Again, I lift up those who are ill, sick. Heal their body, Lord, that they could be with us on the Lord's day. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, let's do higher ground, all right? Let's do that for our closing one. You got that there? I'm pre- do the first verse in the chorus, all right? I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir.